back to another lesson in Swift for Beginners. In the last lesson, we covered different types of numbers, so doubles, floats, and ints. In today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at uh, frameworks and libraries. And let's get started by getting rid of all this stuff from last lesson, including this comment. So I'm sure you've noticed for the past several lessons, we have this import foundation up here. So what the heck is this? Um, and I've kind of been uh, purposely ignoring it because I wanted to dedicate a video to this. So if you hold command and click on this, you can actually click on jump to definition and you'll get this monstrosity here. But if we go back, basically what a framework in a library is in computer science and again, and hence in Swift is a group of functions, classes, variables, and just stuff in general that is organized for people to include and import into their files as they need it. So in iOS, there is a framework called UIKit, so User Interface Kit, um, that includes all the user interface stuff. So stuff like buttons, images, text, um, controllers, switches, etc., etc. And they organize it for the sake of sanity and being able to find stuff because, uh, as you can imagine, people have written billions of lines of code, so it needs to be organized. So at the top of any of your Swift files, as you're going along, you'll see a variety of import statements. So let's say we wanted to create a button here, and the class would be a UI button, but if we start typing UI button, we don't get it. Why don't we get it? And the reason we don't get it is because that particular framework is not imported. So we need to say import UI kit. And now if we start typing in UI button, notice we get a bunch more stuff, but we also get what we want, which is a UI button. So things are included into frameworks and libraries and the way that you're going to be able to find out where something is when you need it is, a, uh, is by a little bit of research, a little bit of experience, and a little bit of the naming convention. So generally, things are uh, named in a way where you can kind of read it and guesstimate what's included. So this brings me to the second piece that I wanted to talk about, uh, which was naming conventions. So in Apple land, Apple likes to name things kit. So um, if we have an app, if we have a framework with functions and classes that deal with uh, in-app purchases and transactions, that's stuff related to like a store, right? Like you're, you're selling stuff, you have a shopping cart, et cetera, et cetera. So the framework for that is called store kit. So everything is a kit. Um, and take that with a grain of salt because it really isn't everything, but it is a very popular naming convention. Another common thing that people do is they like to alphabetize their import statements. So F S U in this case, that's something important to know. Of course, these are all libraries and frameworks that are written by Apple and included in your environment to import, but you can certainly go and import other, other libraries by third party companies as well. And the popular example that I like to give is uh, AdMob. So AdMob is Google's uh, advertising framework. And I'm sure in a lot of apps you've seen a little banner ad or a full screen ad pop up with a video or some like annoying music or something play. And that's driven by Google's network of advertisers. But hold on, this is Apple's environment, Apple's code. So where, how does Google fit into all of this? So you could actually go to Google's developer website and they have a whole guide there of how to download their code and include it into your code. The long story short is you basically bring their code in and you can do something similar to import Google mobile ads. Now right now it's gonna yell at me in like 10 seconds, right right there, because th this doesn't know what this is because this, this code does not exist in our particular environment right now. But I want you to understand that you can bring in first party, so Apple made frameworks and libraries and also third party. And it's very common to bring them in through something called CocoaPods, which we will be covering in a different course, uh, seeing as this is a beginner course. But that's what this import up here is for all of you that have been wondering. So foundation, you can imagine, has things like 
strings and integers and floats and doubles and so on and so forth. So with that being said, I'm going to end the lesson right here. I hope you guys now understand what this import statement is up here. Leave a like, comment, uh, feedback is appreciated, subscribe, follow. I will see you in the next lesson.